Welcome to an episode of Fallon's Daily Toast. We're at Somerville Media Center. It is Friday night. We're uh, in Union Square, Somerville, Massachusetts, and I'm Fallon Lee O'Brien. I'm your host. And on tonight's show, I have a few guests. Uh, joining me now is Ron Pear, cohort at the Heller School of Brandeis University. It's the OGS Fellowship. So thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having yeah. me. Yeah, how so was it that you even became a fellow and during at this program? So basically, a few years ago, I participated in a different peace program uh, in NYU. Mm -hmm. And over there, we basically talked about the conflict a lot and you know the political issues. And we kind of understood that the, the, there wasn't a, a continuity. Um, we, we stayed friends, but the outcome uh, didn't have a lot of impact uh, in our region. So the basic conclusion was that um, some sort of a collaboration between Israelis and Palestinians must happen in order to uh, create an impact and help with change. Uh, we all believe in a bottom-up solution and yeah. you know making an impact on our communities in order to have a larger scale uh, impact uh, later on. We realized is that um, if we collaborate and uh, work together uh, also after the fellowship ends it can um, have great results and we can keep working together and maybe even influence others uh, along the way so and we all believe in uh, making a positive change mm -hmm. Um, the work we're doing here is the actual peace, as I see it. Um, peace is both the goal and the means yeah. uh, for us. So when we work together and when we uh, create a, a bilateral trade and uh, an exchange of ideas and goods and products and services, we uh, create an impact on our communities. And uh, we already feel um, the, the change happening while we're here. And we can't wait to go back to our region and you know, see the difference and um, create the difference. Yeah, that's really beautiful. And what was it like growing up in Tel Aviv? How old were you when you discovered that these programs exist? Yeah, so um, I'm nearly 30. Mm -hmm. I'll be 30 in a, a week from now. Ah. <laughs> so um, when I was around six years old, it was the peak of the Oslo Accords, you know, it was so optimistic. And um, my mom, uh, God bless her soul, she always uh, believed in peace and she was kind of a hippie in the 60s you know and she was sure she was certain that um, by the time I'm 18 I won't be I won't have to recruit to the army which is mandatory in Israel because the, the peace process was ongoing and I remember that uh, one time we saw a Memorial Day rally and Itzhak Rabin and uh, Shimon Peres were speaking and they talked about um, soldiers that died in the war. And I asked my mom, I asked my mom will I die too in the war? Um, and she said, no, when you're 18, there won't be a need for an army because there will be peace. And of course, that didn't happen. Um, I, I was even uh, participating in the peace rally in 95, uh, where um, uh, late uh, Prime Minister Itzhak Rabin uh, was assassinated. And um, that's where it stopped. I think that uh, since then um, there has been great despair and the people have lost hope. And we're trying to build this infrastructure of hope all over again now, you know, from the bottom up. And I hope that uh, we'll be able to, to do it. Um, I've been, I feel like all my life this topic has been around me throughout everything I did. Um, I used to work for the Peace Now movement in Israel. Mm -hmm you know, recruiting volunteers and helping with content generation and awareness, raising awareness in Israel uh, to what's going on and participating in peace rallies. And I'm really, I, 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 re I feel like it's my calling. I mean, I feel like if we don't like the way things are, we need to do something about it. And um, this is why I'm here. This is what brought me here. Since I left NYU, I established like uh, two small businesses in Israel, a language school and a recruitment agency. And uh, that's how I mixed both of my passions, both you know, working together for peace and business and entrepreneurship mm -hmm. uh, all together. I'm also working on a social business both here and back in Israel. I even started it before I came here. I'm recruiting for a very social oriented company that's called Hot Crown. It's like jewelry that uh, uh, comes from uh, Africa originally and it's specifically targeting uh, people that care about you know social impact not only because 
they buy only um, diamonds that come from the right places, which is, you know, the Kimberley um, certification, mm -hmm. uh, which means that no one died for them and the money doesn't pay for a uh, weapon that sponsor uh, genocide, but also it hires Palestinians and um, we collaborate with uh, businesses, uh, Palestinian businesses in the region, and we aim at hiring mixed uh, communities, mixed uh, individuals, you know, goldsmiths and etc. So I think that business that brings the right uh, product to the people, such as Hot Crown and other, you know, social businesses that we're working on here, yeah. I think this is the future of, of, of our generation. I'd it's like to hope so. What will you bring back when you go back to Tel Aviv? What, what we articulated here is basically our calling. We'll be developing the ventures we're working on, you know, the language barrier w that we all face. I mean, this is what brought me to open a, you know, a small language school in Tel Aviv. Um, I wanted to learn Arabic, so I launched this um, course back at, univers at the university I studied in, in Jaffa, which is also an integrated city um, just so south of Tel Aviv. And people started calling me and asking if there's enough uh, room for more students. At so this language school, I mean, you're teaching uh, just a wide variety of languages. Yeah, it, it really, wow. uh, uh, yeah, it really caught, you know, and uh, people started coming and studying uh, uh, Arabic, and then we moved to other languages, Italian, German, etc. Wow. Um, and all ages. Yeah, so it's, yeah. We have people that are 18 in the class, and in the same class we have people that are over 16. People are talking about uh, ageism and gender. Um, the, bus the businesses that I'm involved in um, cares about empowering uh, women and, um, you know, underpri underprivileged communities. And um, we, I, I think that it can really go hand in hand, you know. And I'll give you an example. Israel is an NGO that cares about um, uh, the Syrian refugees. It's a bunch of doctors, some of them were friends of mine, that just went up north, started treating wounded Syrian refugees. Israel now uh, has, had helped over 5,000 Syrian refugees in the region, and, and uh, some of them are still hospitalized in Israel. And it's really uh, inspiring. Yeah, and, and it's, it's a great example of how a solution coming from, you know, individuals in a community in Tel Aviv can uh, change how uh, the government reacts and, and now they embrace this uh, aid uh, to Syrian refugees. So I think that it's just one example out of many that people, it, whether it's pro for profit or non-profit, um, can make an impact and change the world we live in.